Most Americans are still going about life, investing, and retirement planning as if nothing unusual has happened to our financial system. And few seem to realize the repercussions of the $11 trillion that's been pumped into the U.S. financial system over the past 18 months. At least four billionaires have stated publicly that Americans aren't paying enough attention to this development. And now, a former Goldman Sachs banker says sooner than most people think, millions of Americans will potentially be pushed out of the middle class, out of private retirement, and out of a decent life and into a collectivist nightmare he calls financial lockdown. Find out how to protect yourself, your money, and your family with a free copy of this new report. In it, he'll show you the four steps he recommends you take immediately. Simply go to 2022wakeup.com to get your free copy. Again, that's 2022wakeup.com for a free copy of this new report. Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It is May 17th, 2022. It is a beautiful Tuesday here in Baltimore. Back in the home studio, as you can see behind me. A little bit of a special show for you coming today. I did some of my charting. As you know, I wrote a book about technical analysis about 13 or so years ago. We're going to revisit that. We're going to look at some very important charts, both very bullish and some that are pretty damn ugly. But we're going to get some great ideas out of this. Sectors that are moving, countries that are moving. All this coming up right now on Making Money. Again, thanks for joining me. This is Matt McCall and this is Making Money. It is the 17th of May, 2022. It is a Tuesday here in Baltimore. So let's talk about the market here for a moment before we jump into the charts. But as I just mentioned, today's a bit of a special show. Uh, if anybody knows me or follow me for years, they know that I like charts. I, I like technical analysis. I kind of started a little bit by doing that early on in my career, and I've always incorporated it uh, into my investing. And you know, Wall Street has really come to adopt it more and more over the last couple of decades since I got into this business. But there's still a lot of people on Wall Street, and most likely, if you have a financial advisor, they think it's like voodoo looking at the charts. It, charts mean nothing to them. That being said, most financial advisors are garbage anyway. They couldn't tell you what a fundamental was, uh, PE ratio, price of sales, that type of stuff, cash flow. They, they wouldn't know that either. But they really are overwhelmed and scared of technical analysis. And when it comes to the charts, that actually tells a story. Uh, there's a story behind that because that movement, whether this day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, shows you the buying and selling, which is related to supply and demand, which is related to psychology that's behind either that index or that stock. So there's a big story behind it. And I'm not going to get too deep into it today. But what we're going to talk about are some charts. And uh, by looking at them, it will tell a story. And I'll tell you what story they're telling you. And that's going to help us come up with some investment ideas. Before we get into some of the charts I want to look at, uh, I think we should take a look at the uh, S&P. So uh, as you can see here, this is the S&P 500. And obviously, for the last couple of months, folks, we know this, we've been in a, in a downtrend. And the definition of a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. And unfortunately, we have had that uh, since going back to the high that we hit uh, the first week of January of this year. And we all know uh, last week, last Thursday, it was very ugly. We came down and hit the lowest level in one year on the S&P 500. And we came within uh, tenths of a percentages of a bear market. We're down about 19.5%. A bear market, by definition, is when you pull back 20, about 19 and a half. Big rally on Friday. And Monday, we were down about four tenths of percent. So not, you know, not much movement. Uh, we close in the middle of the day. Uh, but still, we have a lot of work to get back up there. Uh, all that being said, uh, I, I think this is quite constructive. But again, uh, the way that I look at this is if at some point in the next couple of months, we have a pullback that further the S&P 500. Say it pulls back 10% from here and gets in the 3,400 to 3,600 range. We're around 4,000 right now. If we get in that range, which is about 14 to 10%, 10 to 14% pullback from here, I would not be surprised. I think the odds are probably maybe 25% of that happening. That being said, if that does happen, I've been telling everybody who's listening to me, which isn't many people, since this weekend, to do that, to buy when we get down there. Because at that point, I am going to throw money at the, my favorite stocks. So this past weekend, to give you an idea of what I've been doing, as you all know, I've been on the road a lot. 
Uh, I'm in a hotel right now. And it's funny because I wake up in the middle of the night all the time and I have to realize where the hell I am. What hotel room? What city am I in? Uh, it's become very confusing to me. Uh, I've had quite a few red-eye flights where I wake up and I'm like, okay, where the hell am I going? What row am I in? I don't even know what, what airline am I on? But this weekend, I was in San Diego. Uh, Saturday morning, I, I, had, I had a speaking uh, engagement at a uh, AAII meeting, uh, American Association of Individual Ambassadors. Those are uh, That's the association that does the weekly bullish and bearish sentiment that I, that I refer to a lot on here. Great meeting. Uh, met a lot of great people. We had a nice lunch afterwards. And uh, when I was giving this presentation uh, that I put together last week, there's like 32 slides in it, I realized as I'm giving the presentation that I'm becoming more and more bullish on the market. Because sometimes you get wrapped up in what you think and what you want to think, but you start actually saying it out loud and, and showing people sometimes you don't agree with it. Maybe the data kind of clouds your mind. I actually started feeling even more bullish, believe it or not. After the meeting uh, and, and day prior, uh, I met with one of my best friends who was my first boss ever at Charles Schwab 22 years ago. Almost to the day, 22 years ago was my first boss. And him and I, we've been we've been talking markets for literally 22 years. We sat down and went, and, and our conversation is very nerdy. It turns to uh, the market, the economy, charts, everything you can imagine right off the bat. Cryptocurrencies, options. And we were working on some things and just looking at stocks. And we realized, uh, as we're doing this, looking at certain companies, we must have looked at hundreds of charts that, wow, he's typically leans a little more bearish conservative. I lean more bullish. Even he was becoming more bullish. And he agreed with me that this may not be the bottom. It may be the bottom. Uh, but if not, it's probably around that 3,500 range, give or take around there. 100, bucks to, or 100 points to upside and downside in the S&P 500. And that means if a stock's trading at 50 here, it could fall to 40. So we started thinking, stuff, wow, we are so close. And building a, you know, looking at it, I'm building my personal watch list, my watches for subscribers as I'm doing this. But I will say, we, we would debate different topics, debate different numbers. And not everything is bullish, but there's a lot of factors that are pushing me to be bullish right now and to, to refine my watch list. That led to a meeting I had today with uh, my analysts on my team. Again, refining our watch list. So we are, we are getting very ready for what I believe. It may again, it may be today. It may have been last Thursday at the bottom, but in, in an area that I, that I feel is a great generational buying opportunity uh, on many many stocks, uh, pulling back to levels we may never see again. So I just want to get that across to you. That's what I've been doing all weekend. Even on the weekends, I'm working trying to come up with ideas. So a couple of charts I'd like to cover here today. The first one I pull up here is XLE which is the uh, Spiders Energy ETF. You can see on, on, on Monday, it was up 3% as the price of oil kept moving higher. It closed at its at its best level ever. I'm going to zoom out, or sorry, not the best level ever. Best level since uh, 2015, early 2015. So about a seven-year high. And you can see the rally. This is in the low 20s, uh, just back in early 2020 during the uh, COVID pullback, up to 83 and change now. But this is a great looking chart. Breaking out again, my view when it comes to energy stocks and the price of oil, I go back and forth. And the reason I go back and forth is I am not completely sold that oil has much more upside from here. Oil was up big in the last couple of days, back up to $114 a barrel. And we're coming up some resistance around 115, 116. The high that we hit in March was around 125 ish or so, give or take. So we're not far from that level. And that's the highest level we've ever seen for oil. However, inflation adjusted, it's not the highest level we've ever seen. So we could essentially go higher and still inflation adjusted not be higher than we were several years ago. So there is more upside potential, uh, especially if the conflict in Ukraine and Russia continues, uh, especially if we don't go into a recession, which I don't think we will, and global demand continues to pick up. That is actually a pretty darn good sign that demand for oil uh, and, and all energy will continue to expand. Uh, we know, I talked about this last week, that airline fares uh, last month, according to the CPI, were up over 18%, the highest month of a month increase ever. Again, I basically live in airports. I got to tell you folks, every dang flight I get on, they ask me if I want to give up my ticket to get money to take one later in the day or next day. I don't because I have the place to be, but that means it's full. That means it's oversold. That's 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 good times. The counter argument is, well, there's too many, uh, there's not as many flights as there used to be. I will give you that. However, 
even with prices going up, people continue to fly. So that, that's one that, that I find uh, really uh, interesting to look at. There's another one you may not have heard of, and uh, this one is a symbol crack, C-R-A-K. And that's because of the crack spread, which is a uh, ratio used in, in energy, which I'm not going to get into. But this is the Market Vectors Oil Refiners ETF. And I brought this one up because it's at a very interesting level. Right around 31 and a half to 32 is where it topped out in June. It topped out there again in October, in, in April, uh, and again now in, in May, getting up to that level. So if you zoom out, this is what you call resistance. If we break above there, the chart tells us a story that it should go to the next resist resistance level around 36, which is about four and a half dollars from here. Not a huge move, but it would be a nice move uh, when it comes to uh, CRAK. And again, this is uh, that that chart is the oil refiners uh, that we're looking at there. So another chart uh, that popped up across my uh, scan here, and you're all going to laugh when I say this one, but this is uh, GDX. GDX is the Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF. Everybody that's not living under a rock knows I don't like gold right here. And people tend to take it personally for some reason, but I just don't like it. So GDX is a basket of uh, larger gold miners. And you can see it's gotten crushed from 41 and a half to close at 31 and a half today. It's gotten killed. And people, you know, the gold, gold bugs won't admit this, but this is reality. It did break out, but it didn't hold. That's a false breakup. That being said, I just showed you resistance where it's a price level that people have or that that people struggle to buy above that level. Here in GDX, this is support right around $29, once in October, once in December, once in late January, and we're getting close to it again around $29. Again, let me zoom out. This is a very important support level. If GDX breaks this, gold is going to continue its downtrend and probably go down to the to mid-20s when it comes to GDX. So again, if it holds this, you're going to think I'm crazy, but if it holds it in the short term, the gold miners could bounce from here. So I'm saying it. The gold miners could bounce from here. If it closes below 29, you shouldn't be in it because it's a major breakdown of basically a triple or quadruple bottom uh, at that level. So I said it, folks. So I want to stay on the topic real quick of uh, commodities. Uh, I wrote about this Monday evening uh, in my daily, and this is uh, the wheat ETF, symbols W-E-A-T. Over the weekend, uh, it was reported that India is banning exports of wheat. India is not a big wheat exporter to begin with, and they said they'll still ex uh, export to needy uh, countries that need it, that will literally put them through a tailspin of food scarcity. So uh, Bangladesh, Nepal, they're still going to ex uh, export to there, but for the most part, they're keeping it for their own uh, population. But wheat was up big on this. It was up about 6% or so. The wheat ETF closed up 4.4% on Monday uh, to the best closing level. Uh, since uh, early March, and the second best close, I believe, ever uh, for this. Oh, no, sorry, take it back. Second best close, again, going back seven or so years on wheat uh, going back there. So it's about 12 15 a share now. Remember, the Ukraine is the breadbasket of the world. Uh, the amount of wheat that comes out of the Ukraine and Russia combined, global exports over 25% out of those two countries. So what's going on there, obviously, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture in Ukraine uh, came out over the weekend and said that about 30% of all uh, their, their farms that they normally plan on uh, are, are not safe and can't be used, whether they've been destroyed, uh, whether there's landmines there, just not safe to go. And I think that number is probably low. It's probably even higher. Uh, and, and this is the planting season right now, April and May. So we, in my mind, could continue to go higher. Corn, it's about 13% of global exports of corn come from Ukraine alone. So here's a chart of the corn ETF. Symbol's very simple. It's corn. Uh, it was up about 2.3% on Monday. Again, look at this, this rally. It's up about 100% or so in the last year. If I zoom out again, uh, this is uh, the best level that we've seen, again, going back to around 2014. So around 2014, 2015 range, this was the, the downturn here after commodities peaked around 2012 or so. We had a huge sell-off, as, as you can see, but really coming back. The other thing with corn as well is the uh, uh, the corn output, according to experts and, and the government here in the United States, expected to be uh, much lower uh, this year in the U.S. as well than last year. Uh, we're dealing with some droughts in the middle of America. We obviously have a major drought in California, which I wrote about uh, several times over the last couple of months. Uh, as I saw the snowpack uh, in uh, uh, the areas in Nevada and stuff outside of California were extremely low, and it's leading to a drought, unfortunately, or continuing a drought, unfortunately. 
So some commodities, and one other commodity I want to take a look at, and this is one not talked about often, but this is the uh, Bloomberg Livestock ETN. The symbol's cow. You got to love these symbols, right? C-O-W. With corn prices and everything going up, a lot of that's feed. And I think that's going to eventually go over to the price of cows because it's going to cost more and that price can be passed along. And this uh, is a uh, ETN that is made up of uh, two futures contracts, pigs basically uh, and, uh, and cattle. And you can see it's pulled back quite a bit, but again, on a nice support level down here, this could be setting up, in my opinion, for a nice bounce back if this uh, trend in commodities, especially agricultural commodities, uh, I think the livestock will catch up with that uh, and do well. So uh, a couple others here, two charts that are looking really good sector-wise, consumer staples. And consumer staples are the stuff that we need, the stuff we put on our table, uh, whether it be uh, you know food you put on your table, it's things that, that, you, that you need no matter what that we're going to buy. Uh, everything from cereals and drinks uh, to clothes. Consumer Staples XLP pulling back from an all-time high on a huge uptrend here. So if this anti-growth trend continues, this could be a great, great buying opportunity and a great hedge uh, to a portfolio. Uh, kind of in the same realm of that uh, is another one that, that's doing well, and this is the utilities, XLU. Again, pulling back from a high, sitting on a support level, and utilities tend to do well in more volatile times. But even utilities and consumer stables couldn't sidestep the sell-off that we had uh, in late April. Now, if I flip over to a uh, chart here that looks the opposite, but you'll see in a minute why I like this. This is the S&P uh, Biotech ETF by Spiders, symbols XBI. Uh, two days off a multi-year low, but if I zoom out here, folks, you can see that around this 65 level, we bottomed in 2018, December. Remember, we had a, nearly a bear market at that time. Uh, then we had the uh, pandemic pullback. Again, bottom around $64. And then just recently, we got to the low 60s. We're at 68.58 now. This, so those are three of the, the last pullbacks we had, major pullbacks that we had, all in this area. It's not guaranteed it's going to stay there, but I will say there's a really nice support. So when I look at this, your reward's so high and your risk, if you keep it, keep it tight, is not that uh, big on the downside. So we'll keep it right there because I think I gave you a couple nice charts to look at it in a lot of different areas. Again, I remain bullish long-term in this chart. Nothing stops innovation over time. Uh, but we have to keep in mind, folks, that nothing goes straight up. We have bear markets. We have recessions as part of the market, especially when you're investing in innovation and growth. They'll pull back harder than the rallies. Uh, but again, uh, if you believe in innovation, you believe in that the global economy, the U.S. economy, uh, and the people who are really the backbone of it, meaning you and I, not politicians, uh, that we will continue to move forward and continue to innovate and try to make life better, uh, these stocks and the stock market will move higher. These times suck. It's tough. But I'm telling you, you keep with it. I've been through this a long time. I've really read history of the stock market, uh, not just the U.S., but stock markets around the world. This is part of what happens. It's never fun when it happens. It stinks. It hurts. It makes you re, re you know, think and second guess everything you think about the market, your strategy. But again, if you stick through it, you usually come out on the other side smiling. And I think this is another situation like that. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Any feedback you have on the uh, chart show, let me know. We can always do more of it uh, if you're into that. But I hope you have a wonderful uh, next couple of days. We'll be back Thursday. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. I'm Matt McCall, and that was Making Money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.